Plasma cutters are becoming more affordable and popular with small businesses and homeowners. So I would like to take the time to talk about what you will need to run one, some of the accessories and different consumables you can buy, and also some tips and tricks to help you with your project. The first thing you're going to need is air. Most small plasma cutters only require about 5 to 8 CFM at 90 to 120 PSI. So your common box store air compressor should provide enough air to run your plasma cutter. They can be run on 120 or 240 volts, so when purchasing, make sure you have the proper input power to run your plasma cutter. Always read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. Using a plasma cutter is very simple. All you need to do is plug it in, attach the air, attach your ground clamp to your work, hold your torch, pull the trigger, and start cutting. There are various consumables and accessories that you can purchase for different jobs, such as a drag shield, a deflector, which allows the tip to protrude through for tight corners, a standoff guide, and that keeps the proper tip to work distance. They also make a circle cutting guide to help you make the perfect circles, but if you don't have one, you can get by with a scrap piece of pipe that's laying around. To make straight cuts, I go to my steel rack and grab a piece of flat stock and use it as a straight edge. If it's a long cut, I clamp each end down so it doesn't move on me. Once you've been using your plasma cutter for a while, you may be wondering, how do I know when I need to change my consumables? It all comes down to cut quality. Excessive dross on the back of the part, or if your cut angle is too great, can be the two biggest signs that your consumables need to be replaced. The two most common consumables that are needing replacing are the tip and the electrode. Check the tip first to see if the hole is enlarged or oval shaped. If so, replace it. Then take a look at the center of the electrode. If there is a large crater, replace that also. Additionally, check your drag shield to see if any holes are plugged. Hold it up to a light or flashlight, and if you can't see through the holes, clean them out or change it out. If you recently purchased a plasma cutter or are considering it, hopefully this video will help you get started and keep you cutting to complete your next project.